Hey guys, welcome back to the 6th Gear Garage. Of all the vehicles I feature on this channel, my Toyota 4x4 gets the most likes, and I appreciate that. So, here's another one for the, all the Toyota fans. In a previous video, I was driving around with over 1,100 pounds of cargo in the bed and could really hear a noisy axle bearing coming from the rear. Luckily, I had the all-terrain tires on at the time instead of the noisy mud tires, or I probably would have noticed it as soon as I did. Toyota has used this 8-inch axle in their 4x4s since 1979 with some slight variations over the years. This rear axle is actually from an IFS truck, so it's 3 inches wider overall than the 85 and earlier axles, plus the drum brakes are a little larger. V6 and turbo models, as well as 96 and newer models, use a stronger version with 30 spline axles compared to the 95 and earlier 4-cylinder 8-inch rears, which use the 27 spline. Regardless, replacing the bearings and seals should be very similar for all models, even the 7.5 inch rears from the two-wheel drive vehicles. Just be sure you correctly identify your axle before you buy parts. I jacked up the rear axle, grabbed the wheel, gave it some back and forth wiggles, and it definitely had some play. A sure sign of a worn axle bearing. I figured if one side was bad, the other wouldn't be far behind, so I ordered a kit to do both sides. OEM parts are always best, but if you're going aftermarket, at least get something made in Japan. The kit I ordered included the wheel bearing, retainer, axle housing oil seal, and outer oil seal. It didn't come with the O-rings. They were only a few bucks, so I picked some up from Toyota. Now, the factory service manual says to use a press to remove and install the bearing and retainer. Most of us aren't lucky enough to have a press in our garage, and that includes me too. So this is a great opportunity for me to show you how to do this job without a press, saving some money in exchange for a little elbow grease. Let's get started. First, loosen the lug nuts a little bit, then jack up the rear axle and support it with a jack stand. The DIY spray painted wheels are holding up great as well. Get the wheel out of the way and move on to the next step, which is taking off the brake drum. You'll notice there are two small bolt holes across from each other. You can turn two bolts into these holes to help push the drum away from the axle. Mine was off not too long ago when I replaced the shoes and cylinder, so it's not going to be seized to the axle. Notice there's no oil inside. If you do find oil inside your drum, then it's definitely time to replace the oil seals, which I'm going to do while replacing the bearing since everything will already be apart. Also consider replacing the shoes if they become contaminated with oil. Moving around back, there's two things I have to disconnect. The first is the e-brake cable, which may vary slightly between each generation of truck or forerunner. I'm also going to disconnect the brake line from the backing plate. To keep brake fluid from dripping out and making bleeding easier after the job is done, I'm going to put a vinyl cap over the flanged end of the line. I'm using needle nose pliers to remove the cotter pin. Okay, it turns out that this piece is completely rusted on. It's an Ohio thing you lucky southern Toyota owners wouldn't understand. Rather than getting to that today, I'm just going to remove the other pin. Use a 10 millimeter flare nut wrench to loosen the brake line fitting. A regular wrench can round off the fitting, so be careful. Slightly bend the line out of the way and cap the end to stop the dripping. Next, I'm going to spray a little penetrating lube on the threads of the four studs holding the backing plate to the axle. The nuts were too tight to get loose with a ratchet. I needed a mini breaker bar to crack them loose. Now that they're started, I'm using a 14 millimeter socket to take them off. I'm going to set the four nuts and their lock washers aside to be cleaned and reused later. With a little pull, the backing plate should slide out along with the axle. If yours is stubborn like mine, a few taps with a mallet will do the trick. Now grab both sides of the backing plate and pull it and the axle straight out of the housing. Try not to drag the spline into the axle inside the housing. Okay, you heard the sound of a bad bearing earlier. Now, let's see how bad it actually is. Yep, this bearing is toast. We have a nice view of the inside. The seal from the side of the bearing stuck to the axle housing. I can see the differential way back in there. Look at all that play due to the shot bearing. Now, I'm going to remove the snap ring using snap ring pliers. If you don't have a pair with the wide flat flange at the tips, go buy one. Snap rings are a breeze with the right tool. With that out of the way, I can remove the bearing and retainer from the axle. Here's how I get by without owning a press. 
With the splined end of the axle facing down, hold the backing plate with both hands and slam the axle down on the ground. The repeated downward force will eventually cause the bearing and retainer to slide down, pushed by the weight of the backing plate. Sort of like a jackhammer. Be sure to do this on something like a piece of wood and not bare concrete so you don't risk damaging the splines. This may take some time. It'll be slow at first, but the more the bearing retainer moves, the faster it goes. For some reason, this axle took about twice as long as the other axle I did before the video. Also, make sure you wear some padded gloves. I had a pair of work gloves under a pair of leather gloves and my hands were still sore afterward from the repeated impact. After a while, you'll hear the rewarding sound of the retainer sliding down the axle and hitting the ground. Looking at this piece of tattered wood gives you an idea of how many hits this process can take. Stand the axle back up on the studs and simply lift the backing plate up over the axle. If you're standing the axle on concrete instead of a piece of wood or cardboard, thread the lugs on the studs to avoid damaging the threads. Now, on the front of the backing plate, I'm using an old school dust cap puller to remove the outer oil seal. I have two wood blocks to put under the flat areas of the backing plate. With the backing plate and the wood blocks, I'm using a large socket as a tool to press out the bearing. One and seven sixteenths to be exact. Give the socket some taps with a hammer and the old bearing drops right out. It's time to clean the inside of the backing plate for the new bearing and outer oil seal. I sprayed it with brake cleaner, wiped, and repeated until it was clean. The bearing has been sitting in the freezer, which will ever so slightly shrink the overall diameter. We might be talking thousands of an inch here, but I found it's enough to make it easier to go in without a press. Some axle grease will also help it slide into place easier. I put some grease on the outside of the new bearing as well. The old bearing makes a great tool to install the new bearing rather than hitting the new bearing directly with a hammer and socket, which could cause damage. On the other side of the backing plate, I'm going to install the new outer oil seal. I'm setting it over the opening and hand pressing it in as far as I can. I need to tap it in farther but I don't want to damage the flexible outer edge. The 1 and 7 16 inch socket comes through again as if it's perfect inside of the seal. If you don't have a socket this size, any pipe or cylindrical shape will do. With some mallet taps, it goes right into place. Now I'm going to pick up the assembled backing plate, flip it face down, and slide it onto the axle. Before doing this, I clean the entire axle and put a little bit of grease to the base where it gets wider to help the bearing and retainer go on easier. Well, the bearing slid out as the weight of the backing plate was going all the way down, but that's not a problem at all. It'll go back in its place when I install the retainer. The retainer has a flat side and a beveled side. The flat side faces the backing plate and the beveled side will face the snap ring. Here's the second part of this job where a press would be nice to have. Instead, I'm going to use a long pipe, the same diameter as the retainer, to drive the retainer downward. If the pipe was a little longer, I could hit it with a hammer from the top, but I can do it by hand as well. The outer diameter of the retainer is about one and three quarter inches. Once the retainer is pressed on past the groove, I can install the snap ring. There, it just snapped into place. Look all the way around the snap ring to ensure it's properly seated in the groove. If the bearing doesn't look to be quite all the way seated, that's not a big deal. As the axle gets installed, the bearing will be pressed farther in as needed when the four nuts on the backing plate are torqued down evenly. Now, on to the axle housing oil seal. First, I'll take off the cover from the old bearing that stuck to the seal. Again, none of my seals were leaking, but it makes sense to replace them while everything's apart. I'm using a seal puller to pry the old seal out. It's in there pretty tight. I don't know if a common flathead screwdriver would do this job. 
Outside the flange, you can see the old crusty deformed O-ring. Now it's the time to pull that off and remove any loose debris from that surface with a wire brush. I'm cleaning up the surface for the new bearing and O-ring using brake cleaner. Back to the freezer to grab the new axle housing oil seal. I'm applying a little grease to the outer edge of the oil seal as well as the surface of the axle housing. It's barely hand pressed on enough to stay in. Using a mallet and a piece of flat steel or a really fat chisel is a great way to get it started. Tapping the chisel in the middle applies force to both sides of the oil seal evenly. If you just tap one side of the seal, the other side will usually pop out. Here's the new O-ring I got from Toyota. I'm putting a little grease down first to help create a better seal. Then set the O-ring on and press into place. Be sure no dirt got left behind when you're using the pipe to install the bearing and retainer. This groove is where the O-ring will seal, so it's important that it's clean. Another important thing to check is that there's no debris in the end of the axle. I had a wood chip pressed in this hole from when I was slamming it down earlier. Installing the axle is just like removing it, but this time around, I'm being very careful not to hit or drag the axle on the new housing oil seal. Be sure you're holding the backing plate with the brake cylinder at the top, not sideways or upside down. At the very end, you may need to slightly rotate the axle to line up the splines with the differential to get it to properly seat. Here are the four clean nuts and lock washers for the backing plate. Install them, tightening them evenly in a cross pattern, just like you would a wheel in a four lug car. The service manual says these should be tightened to 51 foot pounds. I'm pulling the cap off the end of the brake line and tightening it with a 10 millimeter flare nut wrench. Just reinstall the cotter pin in the reverse order it was removed, being sure to bend the pin so it doesn't fall out. And I'm doing the same on the other one I took out before I changed my mind when I found it was rusted together. Last thing to do before putting the wheel on is to install the drum cover. I painted this a while back with black caliper aerosol paint and although it's a little dirty at the moment, it looks a lot better than a rusty drum. Almost done. With the wheel on, I'm hand tightening the lugs before setting the truck back on the ground to tighten them with a torque wrench. I didn't bleed the brakes yet because I'm planning on replacing the master cylinder next. Otherwise, the rear brakes will need bled after this job since the brake line was disconnected. And that's how I do this job without owning a press. If you have any questions or tips I missed, let me know in the comments below. Was this video helpful? If so, please give it a like. Subscribe for more tutorials and videos of my 1985 Toyota pickup here at the 6th Gear Garage.